the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Bible says, Yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My heart has been burning to share the things that I'm about to share. And um, the Lord placed it so strong in my spirit. And I believe that tonight's teaching will be the answer to someone's prayer. You don't have to know what it is. Believe me. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God comes to change our lives. We have cultivated a culture of receiving the word of God with gratitude and allowing it, allowing it to change us. Those who argue with the word of God are those who fail in life. Praise the word. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It never said in your life, it is settled in heaven. That's why heaven is the way it is. When you now allow his will to be done in your life, the same way it is in the heavens, then the word will be settled in your life. When the word of God is settled in your life, your life will change like day and night. I keep telling us week after week that we are on a project. God is taking us somewhere. Hallelujah. Many years from now, you will turn back and you will thank me. You will say thank you for having this. Those who think we are wasting our time trusting God are in for a shock. Because the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth. It's a prophecy, it's not a discussion. And gross darkness, the people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, tonight's teaching is a response. First an instruction from God, but then a response to... Um, quite a number of things that um, or a number of issues that I've seen with people families, individuals you know God has given me the privilege of talking and counseling people an average day is a very busy day for me because you have different things to respond to ranging from financial issues, marital issues, destiny issues, career issues, health issues, demonic oppression. And um, it gives me a privilege as I talk to people every time because it's an opportunity to learn and see firsthand the practicality of God's word. I have families to comfort them over bereavement and at the same time you are celebrating the birth of someone new. Are we together now? You are watching how disobedience is punishing another and you are celebrating the joy of obedience. So you are in between um, experiencing the revelation and the reality of the word of God and seeing the grave consequences that comes when we define our own idea about life. I choose to submit to the ways of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So I've had a lot of issues and... Um, the Lord just gave me a release to really, really discuss it tonight. Please, I want everybody, open your eyes, your spirit. Everyone will be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There are two issues I want to start with. Really, I, I, I just um, felt like starting out, um, you can call it the part A, on a little note since um, Valentine is on. Monday or Tuesday Tuesday I just thought to start from that angle and then just to contribute something not necessarily out of pressure 
but I think that is useful. I'm a visionary leader by the grace of God, and it's important to respond to people according to seasons. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart, and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. There, there is, I have seen two evils that I believe, if not corrected, will destroy a lot of people. Just as an introduction, that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling, but just to connect with it. There, there is a growing fear that I've seen, especially among ladies, not necessarily koinonia ladies. Um, as I talk with ladies, as I talk with women, I, I'm a bit concerned at the growing fear. As it regards family life, most especially the fear of disappointment, the fear of expectations not coming to pass. And then on the other side of the pendulum, I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men, especially young men. Are we together now? So there is on one side fear, the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies. Fears ranging from the, the projections of late marriage, fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that I've been able to see. You know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look, I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married. So much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me, please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing, but just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living, please pay attention. Living in the 21st century alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with circles of challenges like our generation. Just being alive alone is a challenge by default. Are we together now? This is very, very important. And that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts. Listen to me. Ideas. Redefinition of paradigms and strategies as regards living as regards family life, not necessarily a veering off of God's standard, but a redefinition of our approach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s. Is that correct? Yeah. So if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming, there will be big disasters in Christian homes, 
although born again although tongue talking and many lives we are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society i have observed personally now and if there are we, we have a number of children here some very small some maybe in their teenage but i have observed with shock most young people from within the ages of let's say 19 down to 13 that generation has been violently captured by the devil that 19 to 13 i don't know what happened to that generation of young people but there is a disaster they are they are outspoken rebellion against the things of god is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the american church are we together yeah you study children most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that they are outspoken rebellion against the life of god the ways of god they are really the technological generation that that teenage and if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas there will be a very serious challenge the average christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting because it has changed back in the olden days the parents were the principal instructors of a child but right now the average child has many teachers are we together the school teachers are just one the parents are even the least there are many other things there's facebook to teach there's youtube to teach are we together gone are the days where you can you can off a television and say sit down and read your book you off a television he switches it on on his device think about that the advancement in technology is a double-edged sword it's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others so i i really would want to talk to us um ladies let me start with you there are certain things sisters i love you and i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen i guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him write it down i've upgraded my curriculum on this you will you will be interested to hear the things i'm going to tell you now a thorough upgrade just four things i've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman i don't care whether the brother has a bible on top of his head if these four things are not in place your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster ready number one you have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not god fearing don't be too fast allow me to properly define what i mean by god fearing ne notice i didn't say born again because that thing has been abused in the 21st century a born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand that's not born again god fearing the primary reason why society is in decadence listen to me is because the men are not god fearing the fear of the lord is not believing in god there are two different things faith in god and the fear of god are two different things i can have faith in god and not fear god are we together now yeah there are many faith-filled christians who are not god fearing and listen look at this i am a christian i am a child of god my life is governed by a reference listen the bible is my reference are we together now my decisions are made with respect to
this reference so when you tell me you are a husband what reference are you leading your life and your family with so many people come to church but there is no reference upon which their lives their ideologies and their decisions come from so they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women there are many women in the last two weeks the number of married women have had to counsel and the pain that the average married woman woman goes through in their home is unbearable they laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret and the sad thing is that most of the men are born again some are even bishops priests sincere people deacons what does it mean to be God fearing to be God fearing number one means to have reverence respect for God not just to believe in God but to have reverence for God let's hurry up number two to be God fearing means to submit to the ways of God submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters write this one down to submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters not some matters you so you don't mix the word of God and culture in our place this is how we do it no in our village this is how it is done this this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men turn them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture based reference upon which their activities are carried out listen let me tell you something there is no man that is bad when they tell you a man is bad when a woman looks at her husband when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad there is, the concept of bad does not exist there is no man who is bad every man is like a video playing out his mindset it is the thinking, the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad. That is why an armed robber can carry the same body and in two years the armed robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad some of them old enough to be my parents and i've discovered that intrinsically every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody i'm a man i've been a man all my life i'm not just being a man now so you have to listen to me i know exactly men are not bad people but there are concepts that have turned men into beasts are we together a god-fearing person the word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If wife come. If. Watch this. This is my wife. And I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is a television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says my husband. This TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now to be God fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness or at least I to say what does the word of God say about TV is the word of God says there should be no TV what happens to my will I fold my will to let the will of God prevail there is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God the problem is usually the will of the man and I look at her and say what part of your dowry didn't I pay you talk to me I will slap you forget that I'm a man of God 
I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? And you know, men, we are very arrogant people. We can be entering hellfire and claim that it's AC. We are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there. And then we say, well, I, I did not exactly understand. The configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect. That's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard. That's why in most crusades, women are more. The men don't come. They would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle. But to come and be healed, they feel is an insult. I am a director of A and B and C. But tonight I pray that God will raise men who can submit. I love the song the worship team sang. Look, there is nothing as excellent as a man, especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of God contradicts my concept I bend I don't look for an explanation no sir it is being God fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the Bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man. You are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair. And say, hey, hey, now you are talking. You are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, in due season, Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord many men do not fear God principles of parenting do you know that there are families and there are cultures for instance that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her she will know that this is not a stupid is not a sissy I mean it's, it's a show of masculinity I senior you in age in strength in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is god and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth i'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and i'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the bible says you are staying with that woman 
so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from God what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the Bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out Lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane. We must reach that altitude this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. God fearing. Sisters, I want you to burn this revelation. The first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought. Hello? Say hi. Hello? Because some of you, if we don't press you like this, you know, I've discovered in church that many people don't listen. As you are talking like this, they are looking at you. They are even writing. But their hearts are already made up. No, sir. I'm saving you trouble. You will thank me for it. Not everything that glitters is gold. And don't let anyone pressure you, whether parents or friends, and say, after all, what is there? He can take care of us. What is your idea of care? Buy you things? Are we together? A God-fearing man. A man, he doesn't have to be a pastor. Uh-uh. God-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor. God-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours. A man can pray eight hours and not be God-fearing. I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word submitting to the authority of the word so you may be Igbo you may be Hausa you may be Yoruba you may be Kaduna state whatever another and you may be from another nation of the world it does not matter the issue of this is how we do it in our place this is how it is in our place our fathers used to our this used to happen no 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 people do those kinds of nonsense things do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people it's the reason why many marriages are not working parenting so the man has his idea on how to raise children he got it from his friends he got it from bad people are we together now do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents he just lived with them it's one thing to live with me but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me that you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you the Bible said, train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books, bad magazines, rubbish films, nonsense photos and pictures. And by the time that child is 10 or 11 years, somebody else is training him. How does a train move? They are connected. The train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops he say if i catch you with cigarette i will kill you by myself i've told you smoking is very bad forget that i'm doing it you are not training the child is god speaking to us what i'm saying is a very serious thing God fearing. Number two, ladies, the second thing that you must, in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person 
Say amen. amen. Very powerful revelation I give you. There are many ladies who say, ah, ah you are in a relationship. I think you should see apostle. Say, I will see apostle for what? what? What should I see him for? That's how after he slaps you and you say, let's go and see apostle. You say, for what? Listen, no matter how wrong a man and a woman is, if there is someone for them to listen, you are still safe. You are still safe. I've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples. I remember one couple, they fought in Kaduna. It was a brutal fight. Police had to come. Police for husband and wife. And, to, and, and they are Christians. The woman just took, she could not take it that day and she decided that, look, I will try my best. Whatever I would, I will have to attempt this man today. True story. And two of them, after the door settled, the police people told them, look, you are married people. Don't make a fool out of yourself. Go on. You can, you know, know how to fix things up. Two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me. So they reported themselves and then they came for counseling. Do you know at the end of that counseling, simply because they were people who understood submission, at the end of it, the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her. Nice people. And as far as I know, things are working. It was a very minor issue and all of that. Sisters, Please hear me in the name of Jesus. The 21st century has changed things. Some of us, this is the dilemma that our fathers came in. They had been beating our mothers for many years. There are some of us, if there was an authority figure, the divorce would not have happened. There was no one. The man decides he's the God of the family. The day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath, everybody's in trouble. Sisters, the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life. Do you know why? Let me tell you this. Emeka, come. Sweetheart, come. Assuming, stand here. Assuming this lady, Emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her. Do you know if she tells him and says, okay, whatever it is, this is an authority figure in my life and I would like you to see him. Do you know why the man will run away? Because he doesn't plan to be faithful. And he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much. He wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side. Hello? Are we together? So he's hoping that by alienating himself, there are many brothers who claim to love you people. They come and drop you for koinonia and go away. And after the grace, they now come and pick you. That's dangerous. Naomi told Ruth, he said... Um, um, Ruth told Naomi he says my God will be your God your people will be my people are we together because if I know this guy with this lady tomorrow if I see her smiling at somebody I have the right to ask a question and say ah, I hope that guy is your brother <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing. so what is the issue and if there is an issue I will at least try to find out it's all right if the issues are irreconcilable but at least that there is some level there is disorder in the body of christ because everybody is doing anything that's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves yet the brother can be leading worship yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of a and b and c you will tell this one I'll marry. Just be waiting. You will just let me just put things in place. While he's doing that, he's already printing um, traditional wedding card. How many ladies have been heartbroken? A brother that has told them he has even met their parents. While they are happy, the next thing they just see a wedding card. This is to notify you that the family of A and B is marrying C and D in in different places. Very careless. And we make the church look stupid. Let me tell you, there's order in the body of Christ. Many people will hear what I'm saying and think, no. Disorderliness will always empower Satan. Disorderliness of any sort will always empower Satan. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Bless you. Bless you. Number three, very quickly. Are you getting blessed? So sisters, the first thing you should look at in a man, and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this, begin to labor in the place of prayer. Labor generously in the place of prayer. Lord, turn the heart of this man. He must be God-fearing. I've married, the deed has been done. But Lord, you can still step in. 
you are the God of the second chance step in I will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not God fearing bring a jeep bring a plane carry hamper for me that, that all that one is your cup of tea if you are not God fearing the first question I'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job are you right with God and you know that you will not just tell me yes I said that's alright let's go to the next question no 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 we stay there and press it right with God means what yeah right with God means what you don't just say I'm right with God are you, are you a member of what I'm a member of living faith okay that's alright no no I can in five minutes through your words I can know you are just a church goer. You don't fear God. Yeah. Let's restore the fear of God. So that our children will be raised. You send children to school. You have finished training your children in the fear of God. They now go and meet a very indisciplined child. Who came from a family that does not fear God. And start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person. Is that not what happened to some of us growing? You left good Christian families. The day they were talking about pornographic movies, you've never known anything like that. And you say, I don't know anything. They say, are you joking? You have 14 years. You've never watched this. And they make you feel guilty for loving God. And it's that guilt that drives you to say, no, I have to educate my mind. And look at what has happened to your life now. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, Apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the world. There are many ladies, if it's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what apostle said. He says, true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crushed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, Apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his ego and as you are passing, he says, is that I love you? So people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly passion 
please look at me let me tell you any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful write it down write it down and put my name under don't don't post anything and put my name but write it down for your consumption any man with no passion for his wife i give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful it's not if it's when do you know let me tell you a shocking truth do you know that over 75 to 80 percent of men even in christian families married men within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives statistically confirmed i told you it's not because they are bad passion it is passion passion is more than physical stature and, and what and all of these things are we together now yeah so that's why i hate arranging marriage i'm saying it again you know it i've told you a marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say here is the lady it's okay you can suggest you can recommend and people can pray but where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day a ring is entering your hand hey, hey, hey. you are in big 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 trouble because the man is only marrying a wife not a friend it is a friend that stick it closer than a brother any marriage where there is no passion there must be unfaithfulness it's not there will be there must be unfaithfulness a man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife he will find an alternative and what a generation with many alternatives his secretary is there if she's not there the other one is there if she's not around another devil is there somewhere in the hotel if she's not there a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere at every given point there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband there are certain women there are spirits that walk in them only married men if they see a young man no matter what you have it's not their business but once they see you you are married ah what a joy if you complain about your wife say ah what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this that's right he's starting it's starting that's exactly what the man wants to hear i'm very serious with what i'm sharing tonight passion when two people come you know to introduce themselves they just come you see sometimes they hold hands it's as if hey, hey, hey let's marry you I just, oh God, just calm down because these motions are not passion passion is not the the physical exertion you are all around the lady that's not passion Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well. But thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married. She just says, honey, must we stand outside? Let's go inside. She, she has already known. The man said, no, no, no. I have to take fresh air. What is all this? Vulnerability. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a big secret. There are four sets of people if you are marrying, you have to listen to this thing two times. One, if you are marrying a man of God, we are exposed to people every day. People means options. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, a high profile businessman number three a politician are you hearing what i'm saying now number four a lecturer anybody in the academia if you are married to any of these four people listen with both ears and add your spirit in it because he is exposed as i'm standing here preaching there are all kinds of pretty ladies you are not seeing me but i'm seeing you are we together Say amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. 
say what is going on here spiritual father and you see a carbon copy of your child look 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 don't think i'm just talking there are many children scattered around they belong to your family it's just that you don't know the day jesus will come let's just leave him to be the judge amen please let me have our attention very serious issues have you not seen families some of you come from those families after 20 years one day they'll call a meeting and say honestly well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around you don't know who is your real mother you don't know who is your real father you really don't know how many you are in your family you just know what they told you as you grow you keep learning more you thought you were seven now you have discovered you are ten and eventually the children will say they are coming when the father now dies that's when you know there's trouble because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls and the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys the moment the father dies they now show up and say no way our father is our father and in our culture women don't inherit anything therefore they displace people I've counseled cases like that are we together very important passion please my brother if you find out it is okay listen it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her the mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you so if beauty represents value it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual look look very well they ask you why I say because I'm a Christian you are not lying so looking it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there yeah, I didn't see and you, you saw you saw it's just that you have self control are we together passion you must have passion you must have passion many people don't have passion the lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you, promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters, who have not come to brothers yet, I'm talking about sisters, but it's a quality for brothers. Passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control are we together it is okay that i look at this lady and i'm attracted to her it's okay but self-control that's what they say in the multitude of many counsel there is safety some the moment you see a lady and she's fine day and then even if it's during a prayer session in the heat of prayer say please can you see me after after prayer discipline <laughs> hallelujah the next moment that's your first time you are even new in the prayer they have not even confirmed you you are not a member of the prayer department you are just arriving that day you say sister honestly where where do your parents stay let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself you are a very indisciplined brother 
because you come into a place with structure and authority and you just come in and do anything you want to do and sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things discipline let people come and meet order in your life then they are forced to respect that order are we together now Jesus is helping us today somebody somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying it's very important are we together now passion if you are married here you must pray consistently brothers fathers to keep having passion for your wife not just your children because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married and you can see and say ah Jimmy is married let's leave him no no you can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me like, daddy how are you that daddy is, is, is just means I'm available gone are the days you can see a man at my father's age see a small girl and say ah uh-uh, my daughter how are you you, you would think he's fatherly my daughter but he's, he's, he's not fatherly my daughter at all it's another dimension on his own so that you are married you know sometimes many men deceive themselves they just think the moment you are married it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married no our society it should be like that but our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry a ring is just a jewelry for entertainment are you hearing what i'm saying now it's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship it's, it's entertainment so when you wear a ring and say if they see a ring they'll mind themselves it's a joke it's a big joke where to it won't change anything thank you my dear love and passion love and passion and then the last key ladies I will dwell a bit here today never marry a man who is irresponsible that's the last point there must be a demonstration of responsibility 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 many brothers are irresponsible Christian brothers inclusive irresponsible tongue talking Christian brothers what does it mean to be responsible to be responsible means it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life I don't mean money that anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh-uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes... You say, ah, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by four o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director and you are now calling a matured boy of 19 years old it's 5 o'clock where are you come home so the guy is now 25 and he stays home he married with his wife and stays home just like mommy said obedient child nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained come home in America from 12 years 12 years old in America you see children looking for something to do post office ah there, there's no chair for us they always expect to be recipients not contributors it's not your fault that's why I'm helping you tonight 
Many brothers are like that. They are born again. They love God. But anything that discomforts them a little, uh uh-uh, they don't want it. It's irresponsibility that produces laziness. Laziness. Get up and do something. You have a meeting for five o'clock. It's raining heavily. I say, Kai, oh, quarter to five, please. Uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Kai, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because you say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not rain. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. Is the wife that works, pays the children's school fees, and the man is alive. Two hands, two legs. He gets up in the morning, sits at the veranda of the house. They are playing draft together with other colleagues, irresponsible men who come. They form a team and they just play. Where's your wife? Uh, you know, she's a nurse. She works in the hospital. You know, women, she will come in the evening. The woman will return. There is no food. She will come and be cooking. And the, the male figure in that family is learning. He doesn't like it, but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seen. There are too many irresponsible people. There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church. Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God, but an irresponsible one. responsibility so you must look at it responsibility is not having a car that's not responsibility responsibility is not having a house that's not responsibility that's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake responsibility is not having a car and a house please listen i can have a car and a house by the privilege of access it doesn't mean i'm responsible so stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible eventually it's an index that will show responsibility but responsibility is from the heart the willingness to grow to press the willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is working on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues, but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after koinonia, you send him a text. Say, please. Sorry I've delayed you, but the answer is no. Because you are not God-fearing. You don't submit to any authority and you don't want to. He may not know, but is he willing to now that he knows? Are we together now? Yeah. Number three, do you love me passionately? No. You passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming. You just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. 
it's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's alright. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give Thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man, nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing, God fearing, meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God, many ladies don't respect God, they respect themselves, they respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, You're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you are a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh -uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl. She's just growing old. Come to us. We, we, we have our legs. Are, you, see, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for? Rainy days. What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-sugar uh, son or ex-whatever it is and call the person after many years? A woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere. How are you reporting her husband to the small boy? And the small boy said, How will we do now? He said, Can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree? Just the, the way we used to meet before. You are married. The, the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships, even in her marital home. I will say it all. My name is Joshua Selman. The average lady still has affiliations. I tell you this. You know I'm not lying. Some of you as you are looking at me, you know it's true. Although you may be married, but you still call John. And it's not just brotherly, how are you? Is the family okay? No, John. I need help. You have to help me. This is my husband. You know he's a stupid man, John. Say, As it is always, you, you know, we know ourselves. I say, no problem, John. Can you do the transfer now? Praise God. That's why they are not faithful. That's why they are not desperate to change their husbands. When they come for prayer meetings like this and they say, if your husband is not doing well, pray. They are not praying. They know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested. So they rather just other people pray. And you see the woman just praying, just looking around. Because whatever happens, there is a, well, you don't say concubine for a man, do you? Somebody somewhere, an affiliate. <laughs> Who they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. 
I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not, submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well. No matter how long you have been going out, submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship, my blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message. Because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster. No guidance. Submit to the man at all times. And it starts from the relationship. It's not when you get married. No, it starts from the relationship. I know submission is not foolishness, but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well, and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If it's deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If it's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. There are many people like counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. 
Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person will go and publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, look, I remember what you did to me. These are that. Because we don't keep quiet. The Bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise. The Bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times when God can give an instruction. Promise. So that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment. I don't teach irresponsibility but there are times God will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to London on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here now on healthy comparison hospitality I don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just with the friend you eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say this bond serve is not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in a home visitors who come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah, where we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming which rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then <laughs> ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your pot is your own. Your corner is your own. Your everything is your own. Your shoe is your own. Your water is your own. Your Bible is your own. Your bedsheet is your own. That's how everything will be your own. Even when you get married, you will demarcate it. Husband, this section of the house is for me. This one is for you. This one is for the children. There are many people who cannot give. They like taking, but they cannot give. Me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira recharge card he said what will i do he's already rich 
That's he's the one that asked me out. I didn't ask him. All that those stupid Nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives. No, sir. Sacrifice. Say sacrifice. You must learn to sacrifice. Many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial. They feel cheap being sacrificial. We have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice. So they come to a guy and honestly speaking, all this guy has is a small room and all of this, but God is helping him. And no, 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 no. That attitude of sacrifice is not there. I want tomorrow now. Now, I want tomorrow now. They say we should do this, this and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before, he gave her 10,000. As if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with. And you want to swallow him. Only 2,000. Okay, I'm grateful. You will say you are grateful, but your body language for that remaining one month. Kai, is being shameless. It's not good training. Hallelujah. You come into the life of a man, you did not contribute anything. Yet, just because he loves you, you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his ATM and control his destiny. The only person permitted to occupy that position is Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. There are many brothers suffering under the hands of of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient you don't eat tomorrow today are you getting blessed brothers the last thing is now the physical factor are you seeing that is now I even brought the physical factor it must be in that order that's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at she beautiful is she all of these things L listen as i have known god more truly let me tell you this as i have known god more and as i've received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have walked in this life i found out that all these physical things they are important but sincerely let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart they will fade like a leaf they will fade and vanish like a leaf I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Joss when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man. He used to be my principal and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important. But when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God, are we together now? Supersedes, what's the second one? Submission to the man supersedes whatever You've heard me say it again. You just come and meet a lady. There are serious issues. Maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-Christians. You know what I mean? And she's the only Christian. She's saying, sorry, oh, this is the family you are going to. You didn't settle down to pray. You said, no problem. You are too fine for me to let you go. You are in trouble. My mother is a witch. It's okay. I love you like that. I, me, I'm telling you, she's a traditional. Pra I know. Don't, don't worry. There's koinonia. There's miracle service. And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of, uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. I can't have a child. That's a little bit what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. As if she didn't tell you. You see it? Please, spiritualize spiritualize your process of getting a wife don't be carnal don't sit with brothers and say if you looked at this one what do you what can you say it depends on who you are talking to if you are talking 
if you are talking to a brother who is not born again, you are in trouble. He will give you the counsel of Ahitophel. And after two years, you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade. Say amen. God-fearing, submissive at all times, sacrificial, hospitable. Let me talk about responsibility for a while. And then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Write it down. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Please give us First Timothy 5 verse 8 quickly. Brothers, I want to talk to you now. I want to talk to everybody. But specifically to the men. We need responsible men in our society. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Is that possible? If that's not possible, I would look for it. Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says, provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches. Whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of consequences. An awareness of consequences. That if you do this, there is a consequence. If you do not do this, there is a consequence. Responsibility is an awareness of consequence. I identified a few reasons here where people are, why people are generally not responsible. Let me talk about them for a few minutes. Number one, the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment. The reason why many brothers, many sisters, but brothers especially, may never get established is indecision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. I want to eat rice. That's a wish. I want to eat rice, but I will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it. Or I will go to the market to cook it. That's a decision. Backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it. There are many brothers wishing. Wishing through prayer. Wishing through reading books. Wishing through receiving prophecy. Wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service. No. Wishing does not pro provide an answer. Indecision over being successful. Look at me. God is speaking to people here. I preached... The first message I preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called come out of your father's house. That message blessed people in no small way. There are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young. I'm, I'm young, you know. I am 20. I am 30. Even 40, you say you are young. Are we together? You must learn to take responsibility over your, your life. If anything will be done, you will have to contribute in making it happen. Indecision. You've never made a decision to rise up and be serious. You've made a decision to marry. You've made a decision to have children. You've made a decision to fantasize. But you've not made a decision to be diligent. Diligent. And say, no, I'm tired of the way my life is. Lord Jesus, things have to change. Look, let me tell you something. There are brothers listening to me right now and some following online. This night should be your night of decision. Many years ago, I, got, I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person. I, it was a vow that I took with God. 
Are we together? Exactly 14 years ago. In fact, 15 years ago. Exactly 15 years ago. I made that decision. That I was going to be serious and be responsible. The first book I bought was Discovering Your Purpose by Dr. Mike Mudok. Dr. Miles Munro. And I sat down. When I read that book, I cried. I remember writing it. I still have the book till today. It was a vow that I wrote. I will be a responsible man of God. I will be a, a responsible father. I will be a responsible husband. I will be a responsible leader. Decisions. How do I know you have taken a decision to be successful? When you stop making excuses. Excuses, the language of irresponsible men. I would have done it, but it's not my fault. You too, you understand. No, sir. Stop making excuses. Nigeria is in recession, that's why no. Men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men. And that includes women too, of course. Number two, admit your mistakes. That's how I know you have decided to succeed. Admit your mistakes. Admit it. Oh, I was careless in this area. I admit. Number three, stop blaming other people for your problems. Many young Nigerians like this. We blame government. We blame all kinds of things. We blame demons. We blame our father. My father didn't train me well. At my age, look at it's now I'm entering 100 level. It's not the best. But now that you have entered, take responsibility. Take responsibility. There are too many people in anger blaming people. They didn't pay my school fees. The reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father. Okay, I agree. I sympathize with you. But now that you are in Christ, is God speaking to us tonight? This teaching is becoming hot. Koinonia is quiet. I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal. Stop making excuses. Brother, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are making the same excuse since you were 15. You are 31 now. Stop making excuses. Your father drove your mother when you were 9 years. Now you are 20. You are 20. 11 years ago. Get over it and move forward. Oh, apostle, I was raped when I was two years. I'm sorry. I feel very bad for you. But the God of heaven has helped. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening. But get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70-year-old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him. And they'll send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. Well, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that. Trouble. Stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years? That's a wasted life. Indecision. Have you made a decision that you will succeed? Brothers, look at me. Have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority? Don't say amen. Have you made a decision? Have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months. Madam, shift! One small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates. Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. 
when you make a decision to be successful you will stop immediately you stop being a small child the concept of small child is not by age the moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused that's why people are free 10 o'clock you see them moving around drinking sugar cane on the road eating carrots on the road just moving around and they say ah bros how now and say you are free are you are you free say yes where are you going man i got one movie there's one new computer game that's a man who has not made a decision to be successful because when you make that decision your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime you will be too busy you have to even receive grace from god to think about marriage many people are not purpose driven by nine o'clock you've slept you wake up by six because you are free you still sleep back wake up by 12 you wake up you are still free you still sleep back you spend from four to five making calls disturbing visionary people how are you it's been a while say sorry i'm walking why are you treating me like this is it because i don't have money let's talk jerry and the person is saying i'm busy and you call it pride may you be too busy for your enemies to distract you may you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping talking nonsense there are many of us our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything because you are not working you don't do anything people will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house your your house is the meeting place everybody talks about their marriage they talk about their children they talk about everything you are the recipient no be too busy be too busy are we together somebody wants to come and gossip as he's coming close to your house he sees that you are busy there are so many things happening many brothers are too idle they are too idle call them in the night they are snoring call them in the morning they are snoring you're not going to make a great life that way look i will tell you the truth because i love you that's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees huh could not pay our school fees there are fathers today there are many people seated here it's not your parents that are paying your school fees and they are alive and they are doing well you come and meet them and say daddy i need school fees they say are you stupid what should i do he said i don't know what is happening in nigeria automatically what they are telling you is are you not a lady go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees do you know how i know many parents are irresponsible now let me say this and i say it with all honor to god for the privilege of being able to help people out of all the people i have paid their school fees and paid the school fees less than two percent less than two percent of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees there are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, Come, oh, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary as i counsel people i'm being afraid honestly i'll tell you this there are many people i tell you their parents are not responsible for their lives a daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning, she's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, Uh uh, you are enjoying, you know. Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11 30 in the night. 11 30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, uh uh, my God, look at this guy welcome she enters with a nude dressing that already shows hellfire and yet 
you, you please see this thing I'm saying. I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me, listen to me, who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judges, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He say, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Hi, parents, we need we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around, you are seeing. It looks like they are healthy. They, 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 aside from the spirit in them, spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head, they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind of that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. They look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. 
from tomorrow. They are selling cakes now, selling balloons, selling letters, selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves about to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them, their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys. No. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband. The owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them, taking care of themselves. I asked the lady, how have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring. I laughed. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities, wasted relationships. I like us to read it is projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis many people go and collect loan from the bank instead of them to buy a simple car they buy different kinds of cars move around to prove a point you are earning 20,000 you are buying a material of 50,000 and you wear it and everybody around you does not know let me show you how Satan cheats Africans there are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? Of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. 
you are a student you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around I have this no sir it's a waster and we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful we put pressure on them to prove that the word is working and in an attempt to show that the word is working the money that God gave the guy to help him he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith faith is not foolishness you are in 200 level you are wearing a a, a, a weaver of, of 20,000 no there are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating where a piece of meat a big piece of meat is 500 naira see that and you eat three square meals a day they give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent some of us have a spirit of spending you can't rest till it finishes it's a spirit waster are we together you are wearing a shoe of this amount please i'm talking to you you have to square up there are things in your life you can go and sell that's your capital sell all those nonsense you have three phones who are you calling you are loading your phone with ten thousand naira in a month that's somebody's salary and you all you are doing is gisting rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives praise the lord you are not doing anything your baba comes to meet you one thousand naira per baby can't you go and kill what are you rushing for are you getting what i'm saying now there are people who don't have any money you are not earning anything you charter a car to wherever you want to go to let me show you how we waste money Twenty-five thousand naira on a trip oh i can't enter night bus we have to fly Thirty thousand naira economy is finished book business class Forty-five thousand naira you are paying you are flying away your destiny whereas with five thousand naira you can with honor i'm not saying the days will not come for those things but not now fake life you see people living especially we men of god fake life so that i will show that i'm anointed you go and buy a watch of hundred thousand you are wearing it no let me tell you when you rise everything around you rises so when you fake it nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been you don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence when koinonia started here with crowds of people packed to outside i will come on a bike a bike miracle service people are waiting the next thing you hear sound of a bike i will drop from it honorably with my bible and at that time i was already blessed please stop any fake life we know you are responsible and we know god will help you brothers am i speaking to you this pressure of trying to look like joshua selman you will die oh you don't know the fire i've passed through to come where i am no no sir this pressure of trying to do this visitors if i am coming to your house if all you have is water keep it there don't go and borrow money to cook turkey i didn't ask you god is faithful i'm not coming for food There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when any time they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh, no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader. That you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? 
suit hundred thousand. There is a particular anko that this group. Where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they deny that they are your parents? Must they dress in anko? Please hear what I'm saying. Oh, if eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not a not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigeria for January to November finishes in three days. Three days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here. You have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters. You have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you, book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I enter the, I, I, I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, no, 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 I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waste. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God. And there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, it will not become a giant oak tree in one day, but there's potentials for it. Are you together now? Yeah. There are people some of you admire. If you saw them 10, 20 years ago, you will not like them. But faith... I saw one man of God, when I saw his picture, it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist. 
you can use measuring tape and tie the waist. He's wedding with his wife. She just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be responsible to be responsible and you sit down. You are stingy, you are greedy, you are in a relationship, Valentine is coming, you are pretending like you don't know. Plan! You must do something on Tuesday. Plan! Plan! You have today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning. Plan! So that you don't take for granted and say, because some of those things are laziness. Please, we must balance it. Brothers, you must be serious. Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be? At the rate you are going with your life. At the rate of your mindset. At the rate at which your understanding is. What kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, 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 cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? and I've allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of truth Responsible as a father, pray. You are connecting with us online. Pray. I must be responsible as a husband to my wife, to my children. I take responsibility tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, take away every spirit of indiscipline, laziness, and wastage, and irresponsibility. Let it live my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Laziness. Mental laziness. Entitlement mentality. 
waiting for father to do this for me waiting for mother to do this for me flimsy excuses are you praying are you praying Please pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life let them be scattered now i don't care how long any wrong friend wrong associate wrong whatever it is pray i break it now i break it now no negotiation i break it now friends that give me wrong counsel I destroy it now shaka para takata shaka ta praka tani ba shiba na 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 I was not a thief until I joined certain people and they made me to be a thief now I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals break free from those relationships Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage. I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father. Financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction hallelujah let me add one more prayer point before the last one you're going to say lord walk in me and walk on me anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife anything don't pray for husband yet lord whatever makes me a bad wife whatever makes me a bad husband whatever makes ladies run away from me whatever makes men run away from me i humble myself tonight and i ask that you take it from me walk on me walk on me lift your voice and pray what is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. 
Last prayer point and we are done for this night. Listen carefully. We are going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now I tell you the line is very slim if he's to follow everything justly by God when will you write jam and finish strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition you need help brothers it's neither by strength not by power. When I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result, I played my role and ran to God. I, I want to give you the next two minutes. I don't know how you will pray this prayer, but you are going to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I will move forward home. I, I am tired. Please cry, 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 cry. God can help men. Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is speed. There is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help men. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God, the God I serve, look at my life. That God cannot help a ministry. Look around and bring one koinonia poster that you've seen on the road. That God cannot help a people. Look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry. Dead free completely not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I tell you, he can deliver you. He can protect you. Some of us have been trying on our strength. We are going to pray that prayer one more time and say, Lord, I give up my strength. I lay down my pride. Please help me. Help me to be established. I'm getting older and older and at the rate of the way things are going my job cannot establish me my salary cannot establish me my business cannot establish me I need help from heaven Hallelujah. Everyone say God is a good God. Please shout it. God is a good God. 
um, I want to tell you something before we start to talk about faith boosters. You see, knowing the will of God, listen please, knowing the will of God is very important in your manifesting faith. Most people are unable to manifest faith because they are in doubt. Are we together? If you know that if you walk up to me right now and ask me for a thousand naira, I have told you that I will give you. Will you be afraid of coming to approach me? Your confidence is based on an assurance I gave you, whether spoken directly to you or documented. So it is important to take out time and search through scriptures. Find out the provisions that have been made available for the believer in Christ. Are we together? When you are born again, you come into an inheritance. It is by grace, but it is through faith. And it is important for you to know the things that are given to you, right? The Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things, listen, that pertain unto life and godliness, but it comes through the knowledge of him that has called us, what? To glory and virtue, right? Then the next verse says, wherefore hath he given us this great and exceeding uh, precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature is that true having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss so the bible is very clear that it is the desire of god the bible says that he daily loads us with benefits he daily loads us with benefits if you do not know it is the will of god for you to prosper you will feel guilty for learning the laws of wealth if you do not know it is the will of god for you to be healed and to be whole right and to not walk in sickness you will never be able to make claims so it is important that we establish the fact that this god is a good god the goodness of god is an attribute of his glory it's a revelation of his benevolence his willingness to bless us the bible says he that did not spare his only son but offered him up for us how much more with him shall he give us freely all things to enjoy are we together i can guarantee you it is god's will for you to experience the fullness of the essence of the life of god now we don't serve god because of those results we don't serve god for money we don't serve god for children we don't serve god for jobs and all of that however at a point in your christian experience god has arranged these things to be consolations to you the same way if i come to a jimmy's house i didn't come to eat are we together i didn't come to his house to eat however if i come to his house and i sit down and the wife serves me something i should enjoy it it's part of their benevolence it's part of the package for hospitality are we together now so we love God for who he is. We love God enough for what Jesus Christ has done. However, he has designed a system where we not only manage our way in this life. Please, I'd like you to factor it in your equation of the kingdom life. That there is a provision where you can access a life of blessing. There is a provision whereby the grace of God you can rise to a point where you you find consolations to your christian experience it can be warfare all through your life are we together it can be starvation all through your life it can be sickness all through your life there is already a provision at a point in your life you should be able to celebrate god and say bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name right bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits Benefits, number one, who forgives your sins. Number two, who heals your body. There are many benefits. The Bible calls them the fruits of salvation. Are we together? Faith boosters. Let's look at a few of them. Number one. The first um, key that you need to add to your faith. Haven't discovered that this is how faith works number one is patience write it down the faith the first faith booster you must add to your faith so it can carry you until the word of god is made manifest 
when you order a product if you order this speaker say from uk or china when you pay for it they send you something to your mail right a receipt to certify that you've paid for it and this is yours but sometimes they will tell you to allow for two to three weeks right for shipping they have to ship it down to lagos clay that and then korea people will now bring it to the door of your house but right from when it was there in the store it was already yours are we together let me tell you the truth i wish everything in the kingdom will come speedily some things for whatever reason take time and you will need to add to your faith patience say patience is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am Hallelujah. i think this is where many of us get cheated because we do not have access listen to seeing the things that happen in the spirit while we have prayed are we together now you have prayed is four months but you've not taken in so you believe that because there is no medical report to show that it was not answered are we together receive that boost that sustaining power you now go to a herbalist because you now say god the thing about faith is the law is so strict when you break it it will start again are, are you getting the point now oh yes it will start again after wasting your time then the devil just comes in and you see satan has mastered man listen listen satan has an advantage of age i hope you know he's been here before every one of us so he has seen the vulnerability of men evolve through civilization he knows our humanity he will use the sensory realm because the realm of the flesh is satan's domain listen that's why when you walk in the flesh you can never walk by faith because the realm of the senses is where satan exists he has mastered using your eyes using your perception using the things you hear to change your conviction he is a master at that are we together the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation romans 8 verse 1 to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh right but after the spirit who walk not after the flesh because the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace to be carnally minded doesn't mean to be immoral to be carnally minded means to be ruled by your senses the 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 platform upon which your conviction is built your perceptions but you know the doctor told me look at it the doctor said it that i will never be pregnant again sensory perception who against hope against that report believed god now you know there is this there is this false sense of maturity in the body of christ where people claim they are too mature to believe the word of god or to be childlike at believing god if you are too mature to be a child before god forget about signs and wonders the miraculous are for those who have childlike faith who can say god this is your word if i perish i perish are we together some of us have this motivated false sense of maturity look look we are not children here we know you are sick we know you are sick you are going to die and we act as though no 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 i'm not ready to just speak like a child the bible says except you become like one of these little children you will never experience the fullness of the kingdom so don't listen to what i'm saying and just say are you not enjoying apostle that's why you are saying it no sir no sir it takes faith it takes faith to change things patience patience is a powerful virtue in the spirit what is patience the quality of staying through the quality of staying through the quality of staying through i like the way king james puts it he calls it long suffering everybody say long suffering 
the word suffering there is not going through hell the word suffering there is like long permission the word suffer in scripture is the word permit hallelujah I, I can't remember where I was talking I think I was talking to uh, I can't remember some gentlemen were at my place and I was talking to them the way spiritual things work eh? five minutes to your breakthrough it will still look like you are in hell you know in the physical you can know that something is getting close sometimes it's not so in the realm of the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough you will still feel like nothing is happening that's why you must walk by faith joseph that he was only 24 hours away from being a prime minister 24 hours by the world system he would have come out of that prison to somewhere else so he can now know that wow i'm rising but in the realm of the spirit no sir it will happen overnight you just wake up and find out that things have changed but the waiting process please hear me i know what i'm saying the waiting process is the test of spiritual maturity every man that comes to you god says he's not the one now you're even afraid of asking him <laughs> but god says wait and you are saying oh god will he ever come he will come home. and the day you see him you will know that he was worth the wait but you can choose to negotiate your way and patch something and cry for the rest of your life and say if only i waited two more months i waited 12 years the last two months is it not painful have you seen people run relay someone from round one or marathon from round one he falls down they keep him somewhere and then someone the last round falls down too they keep them at the same place that's what is so painful with life so you didn't do anything grace to finish through in the name of jesus christ grace to finish through there are many of you you've been holding on to the word of god you are almost there you are almost there your spirit tells you something is about to happen but you are about to give up on god now because of some foolish sensory things listen beware of the sense realm beware of the sense realm is satan's realm of existence to a point that you sit down and start asking yourself let me tell you what satan will do he would direct your eyes to one nonsense that was written by one journalist all these journalists that write against men of god he will now write and say can you see them they leave the poor and the hungry and they are buying nice cars nice watches nice this they are not nice people so your unbelief and your fear now collapse with that information and it gives you a legal platform to disbelieve god so you cheat yourself say i'm a believer shout it i'm a believer who against all hope against hope believe don't give up on god because he won't give up on you he said faith with patience faith with patience faith with patience is powerful the first boost power of your faith is patience you know how long abraham waited 25 years it takes time for the word of god to produce but brothers and sisters when it produces when a woman is pregnant listen when she goes to the hospital and they say madam congratulations you are two weeks pregnant her stomach can still be as flat as an arrow but she's pregnant is that true she believes that report and she's happy about it and then gradually in an annoying way the child starts growing gradually with all the side effects that comes two months to go she knows she must wait at a point she can tell her husband my husband i'm tired but you know that patience is not a choice if you want that baby are we together you can wait when you give birth to a baby at five months what happened was that a baby are we together a woman does not say see i'm tired this is five months go and bring out this baby i can't wait she endures sometimes even when the edd has passed 
she will, the baby will still take plus one week or two weeks are we together and she will still be trusting god but when the baby arrives visitors will start coming they come all the money they give is to you but it's on account of that baby do you not know that your waiting is business itself uh, you will be paid for waiting that baby is the light that the bible says will arise oh you will be paid for waiting because the people who are paying you would rather pay you and receive it they can't wait as long as you are waiting because you went through hell they can't go through it so they will be forced to honor your grace god designed the system that way they can't buy you they can criticize you but if they must get that dimension they must honor your grace so please i like you to say my waiting is not a waste shout it my waiting is not a waste listen successful people are those who continued when failure stopped i don't watch movies but there's this film that will never leave my mind lord of the rings hey, jimmy lord of the rings there's that short guy what's his name no 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 he has a friend thank you Sam is the most inspiring person for me in that film there was a time if you've not watched it don't worry just believe what i'm saying are we together the gentleman who was the ring bearer was the only one authorized by prophecy to hold the ring point he was and then the friend said something he said i may not be able to carry the ring but i can carry you come on now come on now i don't watch movie for entertainment i watch movie for prophecy prophetic messages that are in line with the word of god I may not be able to carry the ring but I can carry you I can carry you I can carry you force your body to speak that to your spirit I don't know the blessing but I will keep carrying the spirit Hiya. until the result comes all the days of my appointed time brothers and sisters the Bible says surely there is an end everybody say it surely there is an end over that pain surely there is an end they went through fire they went through hell when you see us stand and talk sometimes you think we are bragging no sir it is testimony that is nice the process is painful when a woman stands and says for 15 years i had 20 miscarriages but now god gave me triplets at once somebody said what's the big deal those are the kind of people who will never receive anything from God 15 years of insult 15 years of being called a man as a woman 15 years of being threatened that they will marry another wife yet she stood she, she bought her doll baby at the fifth year she bought the clothes by faith hoping the child will come and she was disappointed in ministry in business when you see a successful person young or old respect their tears respect their pain it is only when you have the light that people come are we together there are times in this journey of faith you will have to walk alone because others will say we warn you that's not the way and you choose to walk in it ah, but when you hold that light when you hold that light then the gentiles come to your light i'm encouraging someone already it will come to pass mm. that's one of my best my best scriptures in the bible it never comes to stay it comes to pass chronos it must pass mm. who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the floor i just feel god is really encouraging someone mountains bow down every ocean roll to the lord of lords listen let them laugh at you you are not the first to be laughed at are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says as soon as zion travels it is say as soon as zion rejoices you will have to cry it's not unbelief and that yes patience and say lord i may be crying but i wait upon you 
I'm holding on to the horns of the altar. I know my God will show up. Okay, if you laugh at me, I would have laughed at myself if I were you. But the word of God, my God, the word of God has the power of resurrection. They have learned, they now know what to do with challenges. Mm. My spirit is fired up. Someone needs to be patient. Someone needs to be patient. Mm. Wait. I will never forget years ago at New Extension here. I was invited. That time they didn't used to invite me. I was anointed. I was still very anointed. I will never forget. I prayed and fasted for three days. I had to go out in the rain. No protocol to help me, but there was prophecy upon my life. Brothers and sisters, if you forget anything, don't forget that there is a prophetic word. I know there's no money in your pocket, but there is something upon your life. Listen, I want you to educate yourself tonight of rising above what people say if you want to be great. If they were successful, they would not have time to talk about you. I guarantee you. They are talking about you. It's a sign to you they are not going anywhere. Patience. Can you wait for that child? Can you wait for prosperity or you are ready to cut corners? Huh. Whatever God cannot give me, let it not come home. Mm. Whatever God cannot give me, let it not come. There are some of you here those who have laughed at you will come and ask you they will soon come and confess and say please tell me how it's happening i laughed because i was frustrated not because i hated you i have wondered how you are doing it sit down let's hurry up faith booster number one patience number two the second key you need to boost your faith is tapping into the power of agreement write it down the second faith booster is the mystery of agreement. Open your spirit to hear what I'm about to teach you now. Hmm. Matthew 18, from verse 18 to 20, Jesus speaking. Help us please. Matthew 18. It says, Verily I say unto you, that bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven so he's talking about receiving results next verse that if two of you listen jesus is teaching us a mystery in the spirit that there are certain dimensions that are only activated when there are at least two people there are certain realities in the spirit that cannot be established until there is a witness that if two of you shall agree on earth, listen, I'm talking how many things? I'm talking anything. It didn't say if two of you shall pray. Listen, understand what the Bible is saying. You went to school. If two of you shall do what? <sighs> shall agree. What does it mean to agree? Because this was reiterated in Amos 2, right? Can two walk together except they... I will share with you something that will change your life forever right now. The power of agreement. There is a spiritual force that is released in the realm of the spirit. Listen, when you can find... Come, when you can find someone... To genuinely believe with you that what listen I can pray with you and not believe what I'm praying I have not agreed it didn't say if any two shall be a witness to agree means I believe in my spirit that what you are believing God for is doable and I I don't just bring my mouth I bring my heart and my faith as touching where is it anything I believe oh you want triplets and I'm here with my own belief I'm not a good agreer 
you can pray and i say oh god and while you are praying in the name of jesus lord thank you for a mecca his wife must carry triplets this year and i'm there say amen do i agree no let me tell you how you know people don't agree they will leave you and just go to somebody and say ah triplets you want to kill your wife you see let me tell you that person does not agree with you and that's what we do many of us christians we run to people who sometimes you even know their faith level cannot receive what you are agreeing with listen to agree with you means similar convictions concerning that matter i know god can give me a job of five hundred thousand, and the person said let's pray and then you tell him brother pray for us he said lord what is it that you cannot do we thank you so much he's afraid to mention the issue directly because you know have you seen people like that lord we give you all the praise one thing we know about you is that your will prevails over all he's praying about your issue you clearly said what the issue is and hear how the person is driving around and father we give you the praise in all things be glorified amen you didn't pray for me i don't agree with you that thing is not agreement if any two shall agree as touching as touching lord this person needs to build a house this year i'm agreeing i know it is possible four months is too much for a house to be built lord i agree with him right now he has only hundred thousand and the budget is seven million lord i release my faith genuinely the bible says if you can find a man if it was easy the bible will not it says if i say to you if for any reason you can find a man brothers and sisters it's not as easy as we make it look is finding somebody whose convictions will be similar to yours to agree on an issue i know that we just say in church okay let's agree with one another and of course there's a place for that but the context of this scripture is one who genuinely let me show you two people who did that in scripture the moment mary the holy ghost spoke to mary mary said how shall these things be she needed another woman who has had to believe god for impossible things and so god referred her to someone to agree with her as soon as they met were they praying the baby left that's agreement that's agreement there are people the moment you see them the atmosphere of faith around them will make you to go and adjust what you were praying for the other part you cancel you go and write it back and say what made me cancel it our society is full of foolish friends fraternities that are not profitable spiritually kawana abokina and they are not going anywhere leave do not ever make anybody your closest friend who does not agree with you love is a command association is not all these cultural fraternities we keep dragging to our lives people who have mastered the art of killing our faith you can't share your dreams in their presence because you know they're about to laugh at you god told me that i'm going to have a conglomerate it's a big business and the person laughs at you and says you how are you say how as you are hearing yourself how are you now they, you may laugh but leave that person and never share that kind of thing the mistake joseph made was he shared his dream with people who did not agree with him he suffered 12 years for it thank you thank you the power of agreement ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 let's hurry up ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 when you can find someone who agrees with you there is a force that is released in the realm of the spirit the bible says read it please everyone one to read two are better than one why because they have a good reward for their labor there is a reason why two are better than one i pray for you may the person who agrees with you be your spouse because listen if you're a married person and you have to look for someone outside of your spouse you are ready to pour water it's like pouring water on fire every day every day how many spouses don't agree with their husbands the man speaks a word of faith she goes back and discusses it with people and say look at this this foolish no wonder he's the way he is very stupid man 
honestly i don't know what made me kite i was deceived let me just agree that i've been cheated that's a wife talking about her husband do you agree with him i guarantee you many things will go wrong in that house you don't agree Th that's part of the blessings of marriage you should never marry somebody you don't agree with figure eight figure whatever macho tall dark and handsome all that is nonsense if the person does not agree with you you marry the person you are going to punish yourself and punish your destiny say amen, amen. you see let me tell you you can laugh all you can let me carry my bible you see there is a way listen everybody listen when the bible talks of agreement god is not stupid do you know why he made a wife you think it's just for children are we together there were some things adam could not have done if eve did not come reproduction is just one is the obvious one do you know let's not we're not doing marriage seminar agreement the bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward if you want to experience uh, your life walking against this scripture i hand it over to you but i advise you i advise you never i don't know why i'm talking about this marriage thing now please ask yourself the person who is going to go and see your father with you now don't say does he love me it's not a wise question does he agree with me you are praying in tongues the person is not praying in tongues he's just keeping quiet he's about to stop you it's because a ring has not entered his hand the other day you fasted he kept quiet you came for koinonia he, uh, he acted as if he's happy he's busy watching you you are you are seeing lack of agreement right before your eyes and you are still going you don't need any prophecy you're already in trouble he comes to drop you for koinonia and then goes away after the grace you come and wait somewhere there don't you know there's a spirit making him do it you are marrying that spirit too i hope you are aware that's how believers cheat themselves we cheat ourselves because we disobey these simple principles of scripture i want you to edit the association of your friends do it this night do it this night i know what is stopping some of us because i'm about to talk about association briefly fear of being criticized for some of us who are used to it we it's like butter on bread <laughs> There's even nothing to say again. We have mastered the art of riding above criticisms. You have to learn this. If the closest people in your life don't agree with you, you are in trouble. Wrong associations. If you want your faith to rise, you need to create in your life a kingdom community of like-minded god-minded people never forget this creating a kingdom community of like-minded believers is the key to sustaining kingdom values creating a kingdom community of like-minded believers it matters that you are surrounded by a community of men and women whose spiritual perception and convictions are similar to yours it will shield you and it will help you when you fall out it's easy for you to come because there is a community are we together now if you are the greatest prayer warrior in your group you're already in trouble because the day you don't pray every other person is depending on you you see what that means when we talk about community life all those who have been part of this ministry for at least seven eight years will tell you the reason why many people's spiritual lives have risen is the power of community kingdom community it is on grounds of this that i recommend social media platforms I'm not a fan of social media because it's, 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 uh, it's largely all junk there. It has made the world a psychological world where people don't have, you know, their, their, their emotions are, are like rubber. They can't stand firm and make decisions. Everybody's business is everybody's business. But it can be harnessed properly. Are we together? 
Everybody say kingdom community. Shout it, kingdom community. We were discussing with Ejimi today. He went to escort me to get fuel. And we were just talking with him. And I was sharing with him something. And I was telling him how that this, it is important to be associated with people who you are comfortable practicing what you know to be your Christian experience in their midst. There are places you are there, you want to pray in tongues. You must trek as if you are going to buy food. Then you get to one bush, you look, you shout, ah, you don't hear anything. Then you now turn. You think that's a good association? Yet you, you call all those people your best friends. They come and see you studying and they laugh, Holy Mary. They, they, are, not, they are not good friends. They may not be bad, but I can assure you they are not going with you where you need to go. You have to change. Show me your Christian community including pastors including men of god show me the kingdom community you have allowed to find expression in your life i will know it by the songs in your phone i will know it by the messages you listen to i will know it by your commitment i will know it by the gist your talk and everything around pray one minute and say father please bring to my life all the relevant people who have what it takes to support my faith work lift your voice and pray in one minute lord i i realize i need friends some of you is just occurring to you right now for the first time that you honestly do not have friends to you about it and you've not taken it serious you really do not have anybody you can call your friend hallelujah second corinthians chapter 6 please 14 to 15 let's hurry up second corinthians chapter 6 14 to 15 kingdom association listen let me give you one big advice jesus himself was teaching the disciples a powerful principle of kingdom advance this is what he said he said when you enter a strange city he didn't say start preaching the first thing you need to do is what look for a house where there is a man of peace peace was an ancient word it's called shalom it doesn't just mean somebody who doesn't make trouble peace there means somebody who is open to receive what you represent and what you are bringing it says if you find any remain there let your blessings rest there so as a as a copper when they post you somewhere the key is not to start going around and say man i'm so happy i can't believe i'm enjoying liberty like this no you are wrong the first thing is to start scouting where do we have people in this city who pray that's a spiritual man not where is chicken republic not where is a lounge take what i'm saying seriously and you begin to pray by yourself and say father you have to connect me you have to connect me you have to connect me somebody will just call you and ah you are in this town just come and two of you will meet yourself and know oh, what a breath of fresh air you will blast in tongues for three hours help yourselves and the next time you will be thinking god is not doing anything in that city until you just find a group of five rugged people who there is always representatives in every city that you have not seen it is it's only because you are not passionate enough they may not have a name for any ministry they are just young people who love god you find them and connect with them they will help your life within your stay in that place and if there is none god will begin to move you it doesn't mean you have to name it the name of your ministry just people who come around oh god give me a small room so that we can have that in two days you have gotten a room these are the, there are prayers see there are prayers that god answers fast any prayer that responds to thy kingdom come you are getting god's answer at once Lord, more space and all of a sudden you'll be praying and you'll just hear somebody will knock and say sorry are you pastor so 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 and he said no no i'm just sorry he said sorry they led me here who did they that's ah 
if you don't walk by faith you will not know how the holy spirit works one woman will start coming i've taught you the mystery of women when women start coming to your meeting women are gates in the spirit it means something is about to be born it's a sign write it use it any day to walk anything you are doing you don't see women um let me assure you that there is trouble <laughs> read your bible i'm teaching you spiritual intelligence the first person to herald the resurrection was a woman women are gates in the spirit they signify the birthing of something new the woman will now come she may not even be filled with the holy spirit you're already praying are you seeing that now she will tell you she has two people staying in her house she will drag them the next time from your door they get filled with the holy spirit god is already working by the end of your stay in that place you have over 200 people praying you bless them hand it over to a pastor or inaugurate something there the kingdom has come but the key is to search if you don't find any create one it is god's idea that in every territory there must be platforms that represent center for kingdom activities there must be platforms erected whether as ministries or just as prophetic platforms they could be seasonal or they could be there permanently but god find a space in every territory are we together kingdom community it says but be ye not what unequally yoked with who with unbelievers he said for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness 15 and what concord had christ with belial or what path had he that believeth with an infidel the infidel there is not just talking about a non-christian no he's talking about somebody who you do not agree please i want to encourage you you see eh? some of you in koinonia here God has brought precious friends to you hold them you will need them someone who is your friend when you don't have any money he drank Gary together no matter how much you have that person is a worthy friend they don't have to be perfect those looking for perfect friends I guarantee you they are not around they don't exist you are not even one of them are we together now the idea is not perfection substitute perfection with sincerity of heart surround yourself man of god this may be a word for you there is nobody to help you there is nobody to share your pain there are people here when you are going through pain there's nobody to share your pain with you you sit alone and die alone god is helping us in jesus name the Bible says in Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful and so on and so forth. He says his delight. The man is not a wicked man. The man is not a sinner. The man is not any of those things, but he's walking with them. He's walking with them. Eventually he will become them. Listen, when lot chose a land remember lot and abraham when they started quarreling lot the bible says lot settled near sodom everybody say near sodom he never entered sodom he settled near sodom when abraham came to rescue him where did he find him in the heart of sodom all you need to do is stay near a smoker after one week the smoke will not enjoy you again you are growing until a day will come you do <laughs> you do smoking competition you say you finish one cigarette don't open your mouth use your nose you have graduated to be a pro shout help me jesus the third faith booster are you getting blessed the third faith booster is the power of praying in tongues the power of praying in the spirit the power of praying in the spirit the third faith booster jude 1 verse 20 just one chapter jude 1 verse 20 but ye beloved look up please but ye beloved building up yourselves on your 
most holy say how do you do that pray in the holy ghost pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit the baptism of the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon it's been wrongly communicated by well-meaning people who love god it's been largely misunderstood and i know that there are all kinds of careless things especially for people in the charismatic circle however an exaggeration of something does not remove the fact that it is there are we together it is very important you build up your most holy faith listen there is capacity to believe god that is built as you engage praying in the spirit for many of us our prayer are just need driven angry prayers that are largely amiss are we together first corinthians 14 please help us media first corinthians 14 from verse 2 to 4 i'm interested in verse 4 but let's look at verse 2 first corinthians 14 first corinthians not samuel first corinthians help us please first corinthians verse 2 for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what speaketh not unto men there's already a teaching on that now please let me just say this praying in tongues listen and the gift of diverse kinds of tongues are not the same don't let anyone confuse you are we together the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is prophecy in an unknown language it is given for public edification and it's not for everyone but the prayer language of praying in tongues the bible says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men right but unto god for no man understandeth him how be it in the spirit he does what he speaketh not is that what the bible says he speaks it may sound like nonsense but the bible says in the spirit he speaks what in the physical it sounds like nonsense but in the spirit he speaks mysteries verse 4 verse 4 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what edifies himself not his congregation so there is a place of spiritual growth where praying in the holy ghost i know you are praying but what are you saying praying in the spirit is what i call distilled prayers you know like you said distilled water the purest form of prayer praying in the spirit why for the bible says no man it says that um we 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 do not know how to pray as we ought to right but the spirit itself make it intercession for us i know you are filled with the holy spirit but are you utilizing the presence of the holy spirit and the blessings of praying in the spirit that he has brought that's why every time people get born again we always recommend when the ministry was not very big then i used to do it myself we we'll all do it just get people filled with the holy spirit listen believers hear me it is important that after someone gives his life to christ he will pass through the experience of the baptism of the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues if the person was not taught that way politely teach the person even if you have not exercised your faith and your your the grace of god upon your life to minister to the person lead the person to the place where he will be ministered to forget about whatever mindset they have don't worry just lead them there in koinonia here we have a very robust prayer department now you know I'm, I'm all busy and i don't have all that time to minister to people again but the prayer department there is a special prayer meeting dedicated for the infilling of the holy spirit and what glorious testimonies have come from that many people here have been filled with the holy spirit from those experiences please if you are here and you are not filled with the holy spirit you are not praying in tongues i want you to know that you are missing out on something I don't care whatever theology you have been given something is wrong something is wrong are we together now don't insult your pastor don't condemn your church whatever it is but i am telling you you are shortchanging yourself there is a dimension of growth and power and faith and spiritual development you will never be able to access 
and for those of us who God has granted us grace with the anointing contribute in getting people filled with the Holy Spirit don't just hold prayer meetings and pray and people fall down and stand up and go let people be filled with the Holy Spirit amen praying in the Spirit brothers and sisters I cannot begin to describe to you how spiritual you become when you pray in the spirit bring a weak person we have seen in this ministry weak people weak people people as weak as whatever promise come let me use you for an, for instance i hope you don't mind i always love using him he shared his testimony this guy came into zaria with earrings and dreadlocks This is the assistant head of prayer for a great ministry like koinonia are we together but i can tell you his addiction for god is contagious and god has given him speed his life is moving at the speed of faith that's why today when he ministers to you you see the power of the holy spirit through his life oh no no matter how weak you are the spirit of god the cure for weakness it's not thank you thank you it's not getting angry with people the cure for weakness is engaging in the spirit let me tell you no matter how timid you are i give you a recipe oh you see you you don't know my problem i came from a background where you know everybody didn't believe in me you are not alone we all came from the same background but you you pray your way out of that nonsense in the spirit i have seen people who could not even look at the face of another person you think it's easy for ministers to just stand and hold the mic no one is born with that grace but this is what you receive when you pray in the spirit capacity to believe god you don't just pray when you have problems and you are praying and say hey, go god i'm now praying no you better be hearing me no make it a culture you are walking on the road you don't have to just close the door you are walking you don't have to be shouting and disturbing everybody you are moving around you are just praying i'm teaching you a secret you turn on your bed in the night some of you you turn in the night and you speak nonsense because that's the content of your spirit you only make sense when you are wide awake do you know if you have to be awake to make sense you are not spiritual because your body is only a material i'm telling you this have you seen people who went to the bed of surgery and while they were operating on them they were not in their consciousness they were praying in tongues others were prophesying that's the content in their spirit are we together some of you you sleep with someone you turn in the night they don't come you get up in the morning and swear and deny you never said it that in our family you change it your spirit is like a machine you can program it blessed in the name of the lord you see these little children you are seeing all these are our little children the content in their spirit is faith and faith only i watch them while we pray everybody run to their parents if they see no attention they find something to do themselves and they are touching themselves and praying and this child is there doing her own Aaron's child is doing it to me they are all jamming themselves and all others they are joining in what they are doing let me tell you what they are doing they are programming their spirit the moment their faculties can express it you will marvel and wonder you will see that the prophetic these children begin to prophesy and you are saying when was it built it's not when was it built there was nothing else that was there That's why if you like marry an unbeliever that you you will produce children with double values double standards you are speaking jesus another person is speaking culture you know when we say these things people think we're just i will keep drumming it because i want you to get it right in koinonia there's zero tolerance for marrying an unbeliever not even an unbeliever an unserious person There are clear indices i don't know why i've been coming here and talking about this thing this night ladies let me give you a formula 
any man that is not under authority is a dangerous man. Hmm. Any man that nobody can talk to. You can't say, Jimmy, why did you do this? Sit down. No. That's how he will beat you and lock the door and put the key in his pocket. Because he doesn't respect authority. For now, he can buy you things. But don't be deceived. Men can be absolutely deceitful. I'm a man. I know what I'm telling you. Get what I'm telling you. Men can be absolutely deceitful. Buying you cake is not love. No. Sending you a recharge card is not love. Are we together? You must be very serious. You don't have to say yes. Just ask them to come and see me. Just hand them. Just tell them, I think you need to see Apostle. If he runs away, that's your deliverance. Straight up. Let me assure you. If he runs away, don't cry. Just say, Lord, I thank you. You see, I've been asking you to help me. Now you have done it again. I don't know any home. I say this with every sense of sincerity. We have a lot of wedding cards. There are two more I'm going to announce. You see me with wedding cards. And I can tell you, by God's grace, there is a track record of marriages that work in Koinonia. You see marriages here? They work. There is a science to peace. It's not just about praying in tongues. You know that you will not disagree on certain yeah, there can be little disagreements here and there but as far as the foundational truths about god no sir you've got that covered may that happen to you Amen. may that happen to you don't sit down you go and you're doing a relationship like occultism you alone you are just doing your thing the guy is deceiving you and then you just come and bring a letter and say you are marrying no matter who and what you marry will be there but the remaining part of it, I guarantee you, you are the one who will be there. Please be determined. One of the greatest decisions you can make today as you are hearing me speak is that even if I failed in every area, I must force this thing to work. And I'm telling you, if your faith says yes, God will not say no. The God of heaven, make it work. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Two more and then we'll wrap up for tonight. The third faith booster is praying in the spirit. The fourth is the power of praise and thanksgiving. Now pay attention because what I'm about to tell you is very powerful. It's a key that very few believers, especially Pentecostals and Charismatics understand this key very well. Many of us, especially conservatives and orthodox, do not know the power of praise and thanksgiving. We call praise and thanksgiving a nuisance, but it's a key, and I want to show you what it does. I want to show you the role it plays in the manifestation of results in your life. Write this down. Praise and thanksgiving are the keys that control the manifestation. The manifestation. Call them the postmen that bring your your the answers of your prayer the way bill man that brings your is praise and thanksgiving come here praise and thanksgiving your faith can buy the phone but i guarantee you it is through the vehicle of praise and thanksgiving are we together jeremiah 30 verse 19 jeremiah 30 verse 19 we're going to look at a few scriptures very quickly Jeremiah 30 verse 19 and then we'll look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 listen and they will not be small why because out of them shall proceed thanksgiving thanksgiving is a indication of faith hmm. you don't just thank God for what has manifested you thank God to make it manifest you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah the key to delivering the answers to your prayer 
the key to delivering it making it manifest is thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 please quickly 6 and 7 doesn't mean you should be careless with your life god will not do that the word careful there is the word anxious anxious it says let your request be known unto god using this formula receive from god using this formula thank you jesus it's a powerful thing to say lord i thank you lord i thank you sometimes you just need after you have prayed and fasted and done everything praise and thanksgiving ah praise awaits thee oh god in zion praise and thanksgiving has turned around the lives of people i wrote something down here that i want you to write praise and thanksgiving guarantees the manifestation of your desire praise and thanksgiving guarantees the manifestation of your desire john 11 41 we're reading to 44 john 11 let's see what Jesus did at the grave of lazarus see in fact before we go to john 41 please give us mark 11 mark 11 let's look at 23 and 24 jesus taught something that is very instructive look at this the character of faith with thanksgiving let's look at mark okay verily verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain 24 jesus is talking to us now therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray do what Believe that thou receivest it unto you, and thou shalt have it. Are you seeing there? So there's an interplay of two words: receive and have. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that what you have received, and then you will, you will. Having is in the future, but receiving is immediate. You receive by faith to have it you receive it Kabbalah Tabaya so the Bible says as many as received him their lives may not look like they have him but they have received him and with time their lives must demonstrate the mystery of godliness God in a man John eleven forty one to 44 Jesus is standing at the grave, the grave of Lazarus John 11 please quickly 41 then they took away from the place where the dead was laid and jesus listen jesus tell the father he said father i thank thee that thou heard me how many times have you seen jesus giving thanks in the midst of challenges remember when he was multiplying five loaves and two fish the same thing he lifted it to heavens and he said he gave thanks the bible says and he told the guys go and distribute it next verse me up which stand by i said it that thou may believe that thou hast sent me then 43 and when he had thus spoken he cried out with a loud voice lazarus come forth now watch this you would call jesus you would say jesus does not have faith why will you still call lazarus forth when you have said thank you i've had a lot of teachings well meaning teachings that make it look like when you pray and pray emphatically you don't have faith no sir no sir persistent prayer is accurately recommended from scripture there is a place of persistent prayer elijah did it the bible uses his story in james 5 to give us a portrait of a life of prayer 44 and he that was dead did what came forth thanksgiving so when you are thanking god it's not because the miracle has manifested but that you know that you are giving room for it to find expression say in the name of jesus active a blessing a provision from scripture for my life and i declare that i will live a life of thanksgiving and praise hallelujah 
the Lord led me to speak on something when I was writing this and the Lord told me something I, I will write it exactly as he told me he said teach your people to jealously guard their joy write it down teach your people to jealously guard their joy Isaiah please verse 3 joy joy plays a big role in the manifestation of miracles in our lives I want you to read it if you're a Christian of salvation so it likens salvation to wells there's healing there's prosperity are we together now joy when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter joy joy is of the Holy Ghost there is difference between joy and happiness if I give you money you'll be happy joy is of the spirit it's not tied to circumstances it's an activity of the spirit like eternal life that is at work in a believer it says rejoice jealously guard your joy joy killers there are naysayers there are sadists there are bad talkers listen please hold on let me say something that is very striking you see social media is part of what we were talking with edgy this morning social media your mobile device whatever gadget you have if you are not careful it will add to destroying your joy and your peace are you getting what i'm saying now yeah because we live in a world where the whole world is a global village anybody can say nonsense when he or she wants to say whatever and destroy your joy you have a responsibility to guard your joy you don't have to read everything they post on newspaper are you hearing what i'm saying you don't have to read every text that comes to your phone it's not compulsory hmm. you don't have to go for every meeting and every program joy killers there are people who destroy your joy you get up in the morning the moment you hear them your whole day is dampened their dreams are bad dreams their talk is bad talk their prophecy is bad prophecy there is nothing communicated to you that can minister life that's not of the spirit hallelujah somebody had been disturbing me one time i think two years ago you know he had been saying he has a prophetic word for me i said what is all this one day? why send it now he said no 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 god said he must see me and so when i now he now came and saw me and the guy was just warning me he said god said i told him i said get out of this place please if that's what you want i'm i'm very open to hearing the word of god but this thing you are talking is absolute nonsense please leave this place god is not somebody in your pocket that you keep and bring out when you want to just just leave this place with all that that nonsense you know there are people who believe if prophecy is not negative it's not powerful so they derive the power from the negativism they when it reacts to emotion with fear they say that's right this is conviction no 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 prophecy is for edification for reproof for comfort are we together you must guard your joy brothers and sisters listen right now there are many things happening in this nation that can destroy your joy all you need to do is put on your news for 10 minutes and almost everything irritates you you hear that someone is killing this person pick your newspaper they are lambasting a man of god they are doing this and that they are lambasting the president buhari and his wife they are lambasting this they are lambasting that you now turn to the paper and then the person who is writing it are all kinds of things you will destroy yourself if you keep yourself in that atmosphere ask anybody who knows me i part of my assignment is to design my environment with things that keep me motivated and joyful you whenever you come to my environment the environment forces you regardless of what your mindset is you instantly subscribe to the protocol of that environment i plan to live a very long life see there are people who you see somebody you think is 50 you say how old are you, you say i just clocked 27 and you are wondering so what is wrong say ah, why when you have you ever sponsored yourself and you see people wrinkled and angry stand the morning tomorrow saturday people are supposed to be rested just stand in the morning and see how angry people are an angry conductor 
talking to an angry driver opening their door angry passengers madam now early in the morning no good morning this is the kind of society i'm not mocking them i'm saying joy is a scam commodity in our world a pastor comes to climb the stage with his anger things didn't work well at home he just like a simple message from god you lash it down everybody knows you are angry and it has nothing to do with your preaching say i will remain joyful say it i'll remain joyful there are men of god who are angry because people write all kinds of things about them a pastor once called me and he said um a senior man of god he respected in his area was teaching in their you know like their, their church and spoke about him and said all these boys etc blah 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 just tore him down and he said apostle but you know I, this is not how my life is and i looked at him i laughed i said how many years have you been in ministry and he said two years i said that's why there is a way this thing is like a shoe there's a way you wear it that your leg becomes the same temperature with the shoe it no longer can hurt you it's when you remove it and give somebody you wear it and say ah that's what you've been wearing you say that's how i live it's not that it comes once in a while ah may god give you grace to sit under fire and laugh yeah. <laughs> i want to be a man of god there are many people who want to be pastors they think all there is to ministry is just sitting in front and then your first one year you receive a bitter shock nobody in your environment likes you and you are saying god this was not the bargain god just continue god knows how to motivate you hmm. joy there is nothing in this life hear me that is and i've gone through many things in my life but there is nothing in this life that has the capacity of stealing my joy no that I wake up in the night, I can't sleep, I just sit down. And he said, Apostle, what's wrong? I said, Kai, life. <laughs> Is it funny? It's like you are mocking me. No, no. Live a life of joy. I know there's no money in your pocket, but you cannot carry your heart on your face. Every point is wrong with you. Joy. You see people frowning in society. Hold my hands. Just see someone moving. I wanted to, I intended holding a lady back to send her. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This husband and wife, oh, watch this. Husband and wife. On the way, are we going? Just follow me. <laughs> you are going to a shop. Uh, Oga, please give something. Which one are you? And he said, ah, bros. Like, please, please. Ah, you are not my counselor. Don't, don't talk to that. This is my. Ah. Brothers, may you never be that kind of husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are driving, you are angry. You are angry till you almost want to die. And then the devil knows how to make things go bad. You make somebody want to hit you, just bring your hand like this. You are, you are broken, you leave this, is, and then you turn back. And you are hearing Koinonia message. <laughs> to respond to life I will not react I will respond to respond means you are in charge of what you want to do to react means what happened to you will force you to do things you do not want no sir if you look at me right now and you hate me like many people do all around i mean it would be stupid to imagine everybody loves me there are people who hate me just like you i mean i mean just like they hate you too not that you hate me i know you love me but i'm saying just like they hate you oh all around they hate us all we're talking about a man of god i read an article that was tearing a man of god who i would say if you put a number one man of god in this nation he has the cleanest record ever and somebody was tearing him i just told him this morning i said there's no survival for anybody we're all going to go through that thing if this man can be criticized just for working in miracles you are in trouble do you know that yeah i watch people not you but i watch people as we travel around when miracles become extreme you see the people looking they now become uncomfortable 
Why, which ministry did you say this guy is? <laughs> I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river. Joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river, my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river, my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody called me this morning from the east is getting married on saturday and the money is not enough and the guy called me shaking angry and saying look that he has released his faith he sowed seed and i told him i said my brother you are going to marry take it easy see let me tell you when satan tries to take the whole world to put on your head refuse reject it and stand on it your head is too small to carry the whole world are you hearing what i'm saying don't act as if the whole world is on you do you learn i know relax your worry the bible says which of you by worrying can add a cubit a cubit worry does not help anything but it destroys everything pressure number one be calm number two involve god number three settle down and receive wisdom and strategy say i reject worry Please, brothers and sisters, don't think I don't know what I'm saying. I do. Reject worry. Men will throw it at you. Reject it. It will come as house rent. Reject it. It will come as no money for food. Reject it. If people want to come and in a bid to sympathize with you, they want to massage that worry and put it in diplomatically throw it out. Casting all your cares upon him. Why? For he cares. hallelujah psalm 67 verse 5 let the people praise thee O god psalm 67 verse 5 we're rounding up let the people praise thee O god psalm 67 let the people praise thee O god let the people praise thee let the people praise thee when you read down it tells you that the earth shall yield its increase right it says then shall the earth yield her increase our god will bless us the earth will only yield her increase when the people praise see it is in this one thing that every religion on earth agrees that there is a negative energy that is released from you when there is no joy is that true that's the cause of depression if you ever if anybody ever tells you i have high blood pressure tell them it's a lie you know when people tell me how is the burden of ministry i say burden i'm one of the most privileged man of god in this city and around this place lovely workers lovely people people who love me and believe in me i mean what more can i ask for i'm a happy man don't ever let anybody join you in anger say kai i'm angry you too abi say no i'm not angry. i'm not angry There's this song. I'm acknowledging you for. Sing it for me. For what you've done in my life. I'm acknowledging you for who you are. Dance at your end. Dance at your end. I'm acknowledging you for who you are. Listen, let me give you a secret. You may not have paid attention to it. 80% of the things you worry about never happen. Go back and check yourself. Check the track records. Something always happens. But the worry kills you. 
there's a story I read a few um, um, some some years ago about armed robbers who came to a place and the man and his wife uh, you know two of them were lying and she tapped him he was doing as if he was sleeping they were real armed robbers and you know tapping him the man honey you know get up I expect you to do something you are the man you are the priest of the home and the man tried to act as if he was sleeping she insisted that he wake up and when he woke up do you know because of the fear the woman took courage and she got her she was shouting praying you know saying blood of Jesus shouting eventually the armed robbers left because the house was well secured do you know when she came back the man had died true story was it a gunshot that killed him fear is a spirit worry is a spirit depression is a spirit anger is a spirit all these things are spirit the bible tells us that spirits search for human bodies don't let them land on your own i choose to be happy i choose to be joyful i'm a very joyful person if you're a joyful person you are my friend if you're not a joyful person i love you we're part of god's big family but you are not part of my immediate family i assure you i cannot tolerate joyless people honestly that's why when people are talking if you are crying out of pain i understand i'm human but where we now say okay calm down a word has come from god you are still crying no 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 relax god's word has come there are people here there's a family here they are here to see me they lost their child are they here where are they this family you see seated right now they lost you lost your child they lost their child can you imagine they came all the way they've been trying to see me so when i say joy you've not lost anything you didn't lose your finger you didn't lose your head yes and they are pastors your pastors right they are ministers of the gospel loving god and so you see the word is comforting them and yet they came still believing in God for some people this is the last time they will come to church may may you love God to a point that nothing that happens in your life good or bad will ever steal your joy the Bible says what shall separate us from the love of God it may not always be rosy but I guarantee you you can choose to be joyful that you say yes i rejoice lord i expected you to show up in a way but you did not show up but i still give you thanks the carryover will not come lord 10 people testified that their carryovers were waived why did my own stay in it i still give you thanks it will cost me one extra session but lord i know that you are a master at converting wasted opportunities to a blessing therefore i know you are up to something instead of complaining say lord i hand over my extra year take it as a sacrifice and use it that's how you buy time hmm. hallelujah the last of the faith boosters and then we'll pray is the bond of perfectness the bond of perfection love galatians 5 verse 6 the last of the faith boosters galatians chapter 5 verse 6 i want us to read it together it says for in jesus christ neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision uh-huh read it now by love when the love of god love here is twofold listen love towards god and love towards men it can be love towards god alone are we together and it can be love towards men alone it must be love towards god and love towards men there are so many sad loveless believers they love god but there's no iota of love you can easily know somebody who does not have love their lives they are like sadists they don't rejoice at the lifting of anybody oh he just became a medical doctor and hey, was there was there medical doctor then what how does that give me salary in this wicked nigeria you don't have love see let me tell you when someone's success is not worth celebrating it's a sign that something is wrong with your love life jealousy bitterness all these attributes 
are derivatives of a life that is void of love are we together I really love people that's one of I think is one of the most powerful gifts that God gave to me in fact my name means the way to love beautiful name name your child that the way to love yeah instead of all these nonsense names people give children that bring curses on people you name a child stubborn you name a child idiot whether it is tribal idiot or english idiot is still the same thing you give children names that are both scriptural and very sound the way to love jesus said this by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you preach well not when you work miracles not when you have money not when you have a crowd love love i want to ask you a very serious question number one do you love jesus don't say yes just listen do you love jesus number two do you love men do you love men can you actually come come tabitha can you actually look at this lady and say i love you some of us if you say i love you the person you are saying i love you to will run away because your i love you is poisonous and self-centered and not genuine i love you means i want your money i love you means i want something from you are we together listen let me tell you the love life of a believer is a powerful key is the key to health is the key to longevity is the key to freshness spiritually biologically let me tell you something god taught me you know I, I've, I've shared it here please give us that scripture first corinthians 13 there it says um love never fails look for it love never fails love never fails when the bible tells you want to work with something that does not fail there are many things that fail the banking system can fail are we together the educational system can fail the employment system can fail here is a formula that god gives you have you found it ah, love never fails yes that's it the word charity is love okay it says love never fails say it after me love never fails that means anything i want to do i can make it fail proof by adding love like an antivirus are we together now i know what i'm saying you may not have put the principles but when you are about to fail love because there is love there love never fails all this gossip around bad biting around contributing to tearing people around sitting down in groups bringing the cases and the stories of people men of god pastors tearing people down fathers mothers all of those kinds of things they are expressions of hate let me tell you who loses in the end you you i want you to make up your mind today that the love life will be the template of your living it's a beautiful thing to love people when i stand and talk to people i'm going to be talking to people after the service i'm going to be doing ask the workers listen listen you can ask every leader in this house i love them they will tell you i love them not just because of the blessings not just because i i genuinely love them if you are a worker in this house and you have not experienced the love in this house you are not a true worker when i hear that any of our people are down whether or not i'm around somebody is there the, the spirit of love is where the anointing flows from don't use people let me give you a secret don't use people to make money don't use people to build an empire don't use people love people and jesus said something that is very terrible he says love them that hate you persecute you despitefully use you now that's a painful one i understand loving somebody who loves me back but how do i love somebody who does not love me that's where it becomes spiritual are we together 
when you love somebody who cannot give you anything back in return your love is genuine brothers and sisters let me tell you something love is a powerful force love is not a feminine thing love is not just an emotional thing for ladies and men who are interested in them love is a formula the bible says these three remain faith hope and love what is the greatest love first corinthians 13 12 after listing all of the gifts of the spirit he says but i show you a more excellent way and that more excellent way is the way of love all these people you have in your black book in the name of jesus burn that book tonight change it to a white book in the name of jesus over my dead body this sister you came and collected my husband something i know is my own you came and did this you came and collected this you collected my job all this rubbish and then there are men of god who enforce those things through prophecy and through all of those nonsense make up your mind today that if there is anybody you are holding in the heart you must let it go what's that song you sing worship song lay it down you know the song lay it down lay it down that's a part of the song lay it down hot listen god is speaking to someone now there are there are people here the only person you love in your life is you the only person who can live with you is you nobody else something is wrong with you not the people you are talking about tonight lay it down we're rounding up faith works by love you will never have faith to heal people when you don't love them no no you will never have faith to bless people god will never commit to you the true riches of the kingdom if the purpose of your wanting to be a millionaire and a billionaire is to mock people and say you laughed at me yesterday now see what god has done no you see people do it all around those people are not they are not sound believers i'm ministering to you we're rounding up right now there are so many believers carrying luggages that they should not carry pain hot i will not be surprised if there are people here you love god but you never see eyeball to eyeball when you see yourself you just pass how are you the other person says fine it's just the sound you need you don't need the person's face hallelujah you must learn to love the law of love is where the power of god is released the bible never said god has love there is the faith of god but the love of god he says god himself is love and he that walks in love walks in god you can you are in christ and not have love love requires forgiveness shout forgiveness, forgiveness. say it again love requires tolerance say tolerance not everything in people will change you have to forbear it's a spirit the grace to forbear are we together love requires sacrifice everyone says sacrifice yeah there is a dimension of love that is painful tears may come out of your eyes but you choose to love you do this and you will see the power of the holy spirit man of god let me encourage you whether or not your members are encouraging you whether they are sowing into your life or blessing you keep loving them love them genuinely pray for them more than you pray for yourself and watch what happens don't use them to make a name are we together there are many ministers who use members these are my flocks these are my my sheep jesus is the shepherd the, the 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 only shepherd around that we know was david and all of these people but jesus said i am the good shepherd if you claim to be a shepherd outside of him you're a bad shepherd i am the good shepherd you don't treat people like animals all these are my children some sons daughters flock arrogantly i don't know how people have the confidence to do that if i do that kind of thing will i be able to sleep
Nina Yesu ne bazanko ma bazanko ma baya na sahayo na akanke to ma bazanko ma baya Listen we are going to pray but I want us to do something I'm going to allow you the next two to three minutes don't come here don't come on stage but you are going to walk around to everybody listen I want you to hug and greet the person and say I love you even if it's an enemy I'm not saying go to somebody you like don't don't it's a prophetic instruction I want you to walk around while you are doing that I want you to use this movement to lay down every heart. All this wrinkle you are having, you it has left your face to your life. You need to drop it and say, no, no, I, I, I cannot, I can't do this to myself. I'm too young to be this frustrated. My life will work. Nigeria is working. You are not happy with Nigeria. There's nothing you can do. You are a Nigerian. Hug yourself into joy and peace and motivate yourself. You are going to do that, honestly. Are we together? those outside inside those online find somebody to hug if there's nobody hug your bible and say in the name of jesus my life is working rise up now in the name of jesus rise up now in the name of jesus Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Shabarado Satalabaria. Works now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my heart only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. You're here in this place tonight. Listen to me. There are people here who are saying, Man of God, I've heard your word. My love life is dead. I don't even love God. But I've heard your word now. I thought there was no opportunity for me to love him again but now i'm finding a family that tells me i can make it with him again wherever you are you've never made a decision for this jesus there are others you've given your heart to the lord but for some reason things happen around your life and you are saying i never knew he could love me again and i'm ready to return back to him wherever you are please we have just two minutes for you inside outside i know there are people they are saying man of god i've been waiting for a preacher to tell me that it's never over you've heard one tonight wherever you are i want you to leave your seat and come out right now don't wait for anybody to come don't wait for anybody to come the lord is convicting people the lord is convicting people inside me give me a new beginning turn to turn towards me me a new beginning begin to make your way to the front hallelujah i like you to lift your right hand and pray if you're coming please hurry up join them you are not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus i truly love you i am tired of the way my life is i'm tired of managing my life by myself i hand over that life to you it belongs to you I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight you are my Lord you are my Savior forever your life is in me and I'm a changed person amen and amen let me pray for you father I pray for these ones they have heard your word and they have come Many of them are trusting you for new beginnings. Lord, start afresh with them. In the name of your son, Jesus. And I pray that you glorify yourself in them. 
use them mightily use them greatly change their lives give meaning to their destinies in the name of jesus christ i congratulate all of you please i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and they'll follow you up more warmly on our behalf they'll communicate a few details to you you're welcome god bless you hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline